Well, last week, Pastor Paulo, he brought as a very important message. And, and he spoke about the importance of the family and how to take care of them. Do you remember that? Amen. But today, I would like to address another aspect of the family life. I would like to talk about the importance of the table. It's, yes, I'm going to talk about the table. And you're going to see after what I'm talking about. But firstly, I would like to show about the table in the Bible, okay? And I would like to start and point some interesting facts about the table from the Word of God. Many of these lessons I learned from one very dear pastor called David Titus, and she loves to share about the, the family and about the table. And uh, she, had, she did a very in-deep research on the subject and I'd like to share some of the of the her research to you. Um, first of all, the table appears in the Bible among the furnitures of the tabernacle. Who here have heard about the tabernacle? Yes, few people. I will explain more. If you read your Bible, you can see about this place that the people of God worship Him in the book of Exodus, chapter 25 to 27. And just, I'm going to give you a little background. Until that day, God did not have a place on earth where He could meet men until that day. He decided, and, but after he, he took the people from Israel, from, from uh, Egypt, he, he walked with them to, into the desert, and then in the desert, he made one alliance, he, he made one covenant with the, the people of Israel. And he decided who he would like to manifest himself in this tent, then so much that uh, he called that tent a dwelling place. And you can see this in, the, in Exodus 25, 8 and 9. And let's read. It says, let's read together. And then, everybody, and then let them make a sanctuary for me and I will dwell among them. Make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. Then the way it was built was God decided and he showed to Moses how he's going to build this place. And I will, I will, I'm not going to all the details because it's a, it's a a lot to study about, but I, I will give some backgrounds just for you to understand. Inside the tabernacle, because it was a place and there was like a, a, a fence around, but in, in the middle there was a tent. And this tent, inside of the tent, the tent was divided by a very heavy curtain. And this curtain was called veil even though it was very heavy, but they called veil. And there was one room that was called the Holy of the Holies. And inside of this place, there was the Ark of the Covenant. Have you heard about the Ark of Covenant? It was uh, inside uh, Moses put all the, the, the stones of the Ten Commandments. And that place was a place that the, the priests of the Israelites, they could enter there just once a year. It was the Day of the Atonement. And they went there to pray for the people of Israel and to ask God to forgive all their sins. And then they have this ritual to go inside every year, once a year, to ask forgiveness. And then just uh, put what the picture for us to see. That's this is going to come out. And uh, as the guys try to put the picture, going to keep going. Until the, and then they keep doing this every year, going to the tent. Later, when they establish the, themselves in the, in the land of Israel, 
they built one temple. Uh, Solomon was the man who built this temple. And until the time of Jesus Christ, the temple was there. And then people worship God. They, if they, they sin against God, they go, they kill one lamb. And then the blood was used to clean their, their sins. But one thing wonderful happened, and that's why Jesus came. Because the Bible says that Jesus is our, our lamb, that he came to, to carry our sins. And until the day of Jesus' crucifixion, this place was inaccessible to us as a mortal. Only the, the priest could enter in the Holy of Holies. But on the day that Jesus, yes, this is the picture. You can see the heavy curtain here. Here they are showing just for us to understand better. This is the, the Ark of the Covenant. And then you see the, the priest and his burning incense. I'm going to explain more about this. Soon. But this is the Holy of Holies. Okay, you can take the picture. Thank you. But let's understand about why what Jesus did. Until the day that Jesus' crucifixion, this place was inaccessible to us. Anybody could, could not enter there. But on the day that Jesus died on the cross, his blood was shed. And from that moment on, we no longer need the blood of lambs to purify us. One tremendous thing happened in the day of Jesus died at the cross. The veil, the veil in the temple that was built after the tabernacle was miraculously torn in two from the top to bottom. Who turned the veil? Question. Who? Was God, was no man, because was turned from the top to bottom. God turned the veil. Why? Because he wants us to be able to enter to the Holy of Holies. And now we can enter before the presence of God. Hallelujah. We can enter in his presence because there is no veil there anymore. Unfortunately, there is no temple, but why do we don't need temple? Because the Bible says that we are his temple and his Holy Spirit spirit dwells in us amen that temple was just a shadow for us to understand what was go god was going to do through jesus christ amen now i want to explain more about the table in the in the in the in the other part of the tent that was called holy place there was three things there was the incense the altar of incense that symbolized uh, our prayers, the lampstands that symbolize the Holy Spirit because He's the light, He's the light, and the table of propitiation. Okay, put again the slide number two just for us to see again. And then we see the table, the altar of incense, and the, uh, the lampstand. Now you have a background of the what I want to explain, but I want to go deeper about the table. I wish I can explain about everything, but <laughs> one day at this time. Amen? The first time the table is mentioned in the Bible is in Exodus 25, 23 to 30. And we're going to read now. It says, verse 23 says, Make a table of acacia wood, two cubits long, a cubit wide, and a cubit and half high. Overlay it with pure gold and make a gold molding around it. Also make around it a ring of hand breath wide and put a gold molding on, on the ring. Make four gold rings for the table and fasten them to be four corners where the four legs are. The ring are to be close to the ring to hold the poles using the car in carrying the table. 28. Make the poles of acacia wood, overlay them with gold and carry the table with them. And make it plates and dishes of pure gold as well as it pitchers and bowls for the pouring out of offerings. Put the bread of the presence on this table to be, to be before me at all times. And I 
show the number three now, just, yes, this one of the pictures that people made. The, the poles were to carry the table because the, the tent was, as they move into the desert, they have to, to set again the, the tent and then they have to have the poles to carry it. But the, the main thing in the table, there was 12 loaves of bread and this was for, for, for the high priest to eat before the Lord. But one thing that is very interesting, this table was designed by, what I said before, God. God had the idea. And until that day, this lady that I, um, I said before, David Titus, she did a lot of research and she said, until that day, there was no table like the, this table. There was no table like this one. Nobody has a table like this. Maybe they have very low table, but no table like this. And one interesting thing, until now, the higher of the table is that God designed is the same we use today. The table you have in your house is the same higher as the table that God designed. People still use the same idea of, that God gave. It's very interesting. And for me, this is wonderful because Moses was, wasn't him that, knew, that had the idea. It was God's idea and God gave to him and he just followed. And he just obeyed and he just obeyed what God said. And please, you take the picture. On this table were placed 12 loaves of bread and also a jar of wine. And those loaves, they have to be changed every Sabbath or every Saturday. And they could only be eaten by the priest in the presence of God. They have to go inside of the tent and then they eat the bread together. Why? Why God want them to do that? We're going to talk more about soon, but just me explain everything that was in the table. Also in the table, there was this little bowls of frankincense. And interesting, the frankincense was a, one of the gifts that the Magis brought to Jesus. And then the frankincense uh, means, uh, mirrors what Jesus is for us. Because Jesus is our higher priest and the, he is the one who intercedes for us before the Father. And he assists us in, in our struggles and our weakness. And then the meaning of that, that bowl of frankincense, it means that Jesus is the one that intercedes for us. And also the bread and the top of the table means that uh, when we read John 6, 48 says, Jesus, he called himself, I am the bread of life. And then we see a, go, a, a table designed by God and in the top of the table, we see the bread that symbolize Jesus. We see the frankincense that symbolize Jesus. We see also the wine. And then we need to understand one thing. Everything when God designed this place, the tabernacle, was just a way to show, to illustrate the people of that time something that's going to happen now with when Jesus was coming. Um, Colossians 2, 17, Paul said, these are shadows of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Jesus is the one that all the, that place was just pointing to Jesus Christ. And then when we see these things and then we believe, we receive salvation. Just to clarify some of the points that I mentioned, we're going to see here one table that says the table of the bread of the presence. In that time, only priests could eat the bread and it could only be eaten in the holy place because it was holy. Bread of the presence was also called showbread. Why am I putting these two words? Because different translations show different ways, just for you to, when you read, when you study the Bible. 
because it was to be always in the Lord's presence. That's why it's called the bread of the presence. The table and the bread were a picture of God's willingness, willingness to fellowship and communion with man. God was willing for man to enter into his presence, to fellowship with him, and this invitation was always open. And then we see like uh, God was telling people, showing people how to fellowship, how to have relationship with him, but everything was really happened when Jesus came. And now we have this uh, way to, to fellowship with God. Also, when we have the Lord's Supper, it's all about that table. Um, just for you too, those who study the Bible, you, maybe you remember, we know that when Abraham, the father of faith, met Melchizedek, they had communion and they ate bread and drank wine. And also when Jesus and his disciples celebrate their last supper, they also ate bread and they drank wine around a table. Now we are getting there. We're gonna talk more about the table. We see that the table was one idea of God so that through the bread, we could have communion, fellowship with him. We need a table to have fellowship. And now I want to say something more practical about the tables. Now I'm going to talk about something in your house. I, I have one question for you. Tell me, what is the best place in your house to have communion or closeness relationship with your family? Where is the best place? At the table. Yes, this is the best place to have communion with our family. You're right. You cannot have communion in front of TV, can you? In the bed. With the whole family, no. <laughs> Maybe with your couple. <laughs> but it's around the table that we can have uh, this, we can build this fellowship with our, our whole family. This idea of the table, of bringing communion, connection, and a tender moment uh, that brings peace and provides joy comes from heaven. Amen? It came from God. Jesus is the bread that came down from heaven. And when it is always present as a, at our table, the unity and the friendship in the family will happen. We need to bring the bread of the bread of the presence like Jesus to our table we need to bring him and how can we bring his presence to our home let's read one Bible verse Proverbs 9 1 and 2 Proverbs 9 1 and 2 says Wisdom has built her house. She has set up. She has set up seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She also set her table. Wisdom set table. If you are wise, you're gonna start setting the table in your house for your family. I want to give you some practical tips normally I think every house has a table isn't it but some people use the table to put a magazine newspaper for work in the at the table and uh, but sometimes they don't have meal at the table and how can you start doing this one suggestion I would like to give you, clean your table of all this mess. If you have just one table at your home, if you have to work at this table, find a box and then put all your work in the, in the box and then put a nice tablecloth, get some 
dying aware maybe the one that you keep hiding in your cupboard and then just when a special visit come you're gonna take it put up your table decorate your table with some nice flowers or maybe candles buy some napkins cheap this cheap ones and prepare a healthy meal for your family call them to the table I just want you to give you some suggestions of setting tables. Let's see. You see? It's not, you don't need too much. This is in my house. If you have been there, you just uh, uh, I bought this special napkin, put some candles. This one was uh, last year, Lisa's birthday. We put just white napkins and some flowers. Nothing too fancy, but very nice would you like to sit at this table <laughs> you can one by one i can invite not everybody <laughs> but we love to receive people in our house but i want to share with you, you yes we i want to share with you some of uh, those the research that this lady did and one of the research she, she found this it was revealed that positive family experience at the table is the most significant event for children emotional development within the home in 1997 the american psychological association published a study illustration the crucial whole of the family meals and teenagers lives pay attention the research found that well-adjusted teens, those with better relationship with friends, more academic motivation, and few or no drug and depression problems, dine with their families an average of five days a week. You see the difference? Because they had those teenagers it was a research they talk to families they they ask why your your sons and daughters are going so well at school why they are not so depressed it be, it's because the family are gathered around the table and eating together at least five days a week do you know how many meals we have a week 21 if you if you have breakfast lunch and dinner you normally have 21 dinners meals yes meals but i believe definitely you can at least have five meals with your whole family i remember one time when mars was working in brazil he was working 12 hours he could not come for for lunch but we decide we're gonna have dinner together because our girls were missing his presence and then we organize our time for having dinner together when he was at home and we, you you can plan you can organize a way that for you to sit together with your kids around the table it is in the home that our hearts are formed. if you want to teach your kids about love about rest respect it's at the table it's in your home don't wait for school and other things to do it for your for your kids no ma no matter how much we try to base our lives around other things for example oh if i do sports if i go to school if i have some music class or even if i go to church you're gonna form the heart of your kids no you are not going to do that it's only around the table we cannot change the reality that all physical emotional and spiritual development of the human soul begins at home is in your house is that home that you can form the hearts of your kids it's not because they are going to school they're gonna be formed it's, it's at home and around the table amen if it is in home that the hearts are formed then it is at the table that they connect 
You connect the hearts of your kids at the table. At the table, we experience the bread of presence, the redeeming presence for Jesus that strengthens our marriage, unites the family, and nourishes the heart. Because when we pray, when we gather around the table, when we call Jesus to be there with us, we are bringing his presence, and this brings healing to our hearts. And I believe, dear brothers and sisters, the enemy goes for us, goes something like this. Since I cannot, I cannot get those who truly know Christ to deny him, I will keep them so busy that they don't no longer sit at the table where the redeeming presence of Jesus dwells. I was, I was listening one testimony. This pastor, she, she was sharing that her marriage was destroyed and they got divorced. And, and as she was listening this preaching, she realized the main problem for the divorce and her situation, it was because they got so busy with church, because they, the, they were pastors. They were so busy with working for God, they left behind their families. They were, not, they were not spending time together. They are not, they, she was not cooking anymore. She was leaving their kids to eat whatever they want. She was coming late to their house, not having dinner with her, fa uh, with her family, and then not going to bed with her husband at the same time. And then the, the unit was broken, and that's why the, the family was dissolved by divorce. And this is very sad. This Satan has a strategy planned out for nowadays. Satan wants to divide families because he knows that a weak family make a weak church and also a weak nation. Our children are bombarded by negative and depreciate word at school and at work. It, as, it is at the table where we can create this healing environment where we hear how, they are, how their day was, where we affirm their identity in God, where we can look them in their eyes and say, you are not weak, you are capable. We can tell them, you are not ugly, you are beautiful. You can do it because mom and dad is here with you. Because if you stop to listen to your kids, they're going to tell they are, going, they are struggling in some areas. And the best place to listen what's going on is around the table, in our house, when we are together. Nowadays, we face this spiritual warfare, and we need to decide in which culture we will live the worldly one or the kingdom of God. Because the, the, the word is telling us, don't worry, just send your kids to school, everything is gonna be okay. Don't let the education of your kids in the hands of the teachers, of the, even of the church. Of course, they are receiving good things here, but you have to, ha you have to play your part. You have to do your part. You have to watch, you have to take care of them. Because we are facing a lot of enemies. And this Bible verse, probably you never uh, relate this, but I want to show you Psalm 23, 5. Psalm 23, 5 says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. What enemies you have? It's all the struggles that you are facing, your family, the problems you have. You have to bring the enemy to the table and you have to face it. If your kids are, are feeling like weak, you bring this to the table, you talk about it, you pray for them, you say the truth to them, don't allow them to keep believing in lies, but talk to them and minister to their hearts, amen? Let's prepare the table in the presence of our enemies and face them and overcome them, amen? 
Today, families no longer sit at the table. They sit in front of TV or worse. For me, now it's worse because it's not TV anymore. It's just one little screen and everyone watch whatever they want. People don't talk anymore. They don't talk. We need to talk. We need to turn off TV. We need to leave the mobile phone behind and we need to enjoy the meal together. Amen. There is no dialogue anymore, no more healthy food. People say they don't have time. They prefer to go to a takeaway or a restaurant and let everyone pick their own meal. And I'm not saying that restaurants are bad, takeaway are bad. I'm not saying that. But the problem is we are not giving the real priority to our family and to our healthy. Sometimes it's okay, but every day, be careful. And also, if you spend, if you are just uh, buying food from restaurant, you are paying three, four times more. With 10 euros, you can go to Tesco and buy a wonderful meal and cook at your home. But with 10 euros, you just buy very little food in, in a restaurant. Like maybe McDonald's, you can have made a very small burger. But if you want something healthy, you have to cook at home. You have to spend time, you have to plan. And this is also fun, because if you plan ahead, you, you can enjoy a lot good time with your family. In our house, we always ask at the table and we had some rules with our daughters. I will share some of them. We used to say to them, if you say you don't want certain food that was at the table, for example, broccoli, we say to her, if they say, I don't want, I don't like, we used to say, you're going to get double portion. You say, don't want, you get two. If it stay quiet, just one piece. Because sometimes I know children don't like broccoli or some veggies. And then to teach them how to eat food, you have to give one piece, and even small, but you give to them. But we have this rule. If you say, I don't like, then get two pieces. And then when I prepare, for example, French fries, what they start saying to me, Mom, I don't like French fries. I don't like French fries. Why? They want double portion. <laughs> because they want double portion. But we taught them how to eat healthy food this way. We are giving small piece and then they learn. And today, they eat so much. Like yesterday, Liz was telling us that she was eating a snake <laughs> in, in Taiwan. <laughs> Who taught her, Daddy? <laughs> because we we always uh, help them to try different foods. Always try to uh, taste something new, and then the, the their taste is so open. They are open to try different foods. Whatever they go, they want to experience. They want to try. They want to see the, the taste, and they they learn to eat. And then another tip I learned, and I, we use this a lot in our house, when we, when we prepare food, like when you put the food uh, in your plate, always try to have at least five different colors. Then you're going to have a very nutritious, nutritious food in your plate. And I just want to show you this uh, picture that I explain to you. For example, when you say, what do what you mean, Pastor, five different colors? You can put, like, in your table, uh, cereal grains. It sometimes it's brown, black, or white, rice. Uh, and this provides energy. You can teach your kids about that. You can, like, vegetables. Vegetables, they are sometimes green, red, yellow. And what they do, they improve vision. If you want to have a good vision, you have to eat vegetables. If you want, if you eat fruits, purple, yellow, green, red, and they are good for healing. Uh, meat, protein, uh, we have white meat, we have red meat, and build strong muscles. And white, 
потому что like their, their uh, product, пусть они, они нашли bond что-то in your teeth. Дети, the next которые uh, one just имеют тучность, они едят, <laughs> едят uh, обед uh, so 50% перитризором, когда Once in a while, but this is very healthy, isn't it? And we need to improve our, our, our diet if we want to help our kids and also ourselves to be more strong and, and more uh, like healthy. Another point, we can take the picture. Another important point we uh, reveal in the research, nutritionists Uh, instruct that we should not Потому eat around the house. Above all, we shouldn't eat in front of television. Uh, a research did by uh, the uh, center in Houston found that overweight, overweight children are ate dinner 50% of the time in front of television. While for normal weight children, the percentage was 35%. It means like, if you, the more children are eating in front of TV, the more they are gaining weight. The less they are eating in front of TV, more healthy they are. Why? Why? Do you know why? There is a relationship between the number of hours children spend watching television and also internet and weight problem. Now they, the nutritionists, the doctors, they, they know that. We also know that people who watch television while, while they are eating, they tend to be out of touch with the natural cues for hunger and satiety. You, if, you, if you are eating but you're not paying attention because you're watching TV or watching things on your screen, you don't know when you are full. You don't know. If you, if you, if you want to know when you are full, you have to pay attention to the food that you are eating. You have to be aware of the food that you are receiving. You have to pay attention to that. That's why people sometimes they are o overeating, why they are not seeing what they are eating, because they are just watching TV and then they are eating, eating. And perhaps your family has value gifts that have not been discovered and put to use because you are separate and distant, because you are not together at the table. You find yourself busy going, doing sometimes God's work or doing good things serving, helping, but Jesus' invitation to us is Revelation 3.20 Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come and dine with him and he with me. Where can you dine with Jesus? At your table. You have to spend time with our family around the table. This is not just about food. What I want to show you is not just about food. I'm not here giving you lessons about nutrition. I want to show you more. There is more when you sit around your table. There is much more. God, he, he taught his people to do that. When they, when they left Egypt, God said to them to eat together one lamb. And they, they have to prepare the Passover meal. And they have to eat around a table. They had to eat. God taught them to eat this meal around the table. Jesus and his disciples They walked together and you see many, many times Jesus was teaching them over and over around a table. Do you remember? Have you, do you remember any past that Jesus was with them? Where Jesus was? Seated around the table. The last supper was around a table. He also ate with the disciples after his resurrection and he was... And And he is waiting in heaven. Ask for what? 
for a celebration, for a feast? Do you think you're gonna, you're gonna have this celebration walking around? We're gonna sit around the table with the Lord. Amen. Revelations 19.9 says, we see from the tabernacle table to the wedding feast of the Lamb, God's word is filled with examples of the divine presence at the table, providing intimacy and spiritual healing and nourishment. So let's get ready for a supernatural encounter with the Lord and set our table. How many, question now, how many here propose to start setting their tables for their family and prepare the environment where Jesus is their special guest? Who is here? Amen. Our meals should be a time to get together as a family. Talk about the day. Listen to each other. It's the table that we learn how to listen. You know, when we are at the, around the table, one talk, the other, listen. We, we cannot talk all together. Is there you, you learn to eat different foods? Because you have to eat what was prepared. You're not, it's not a, a, I will prepare my meal, you prepare your meal, no. Mommy prepares the meal or daddy prepares the meal for the whole family. And then you have to eat what is at the table. We, we share what happened. We look in the eyes of each other and we love each other. Also, maybe you are thinking, oh, but I am alone. I don't have family. I live by myself. I challenge you to eat at your table. Enjoy your meal. Pray before, even though you are alone, and dine with